Is this budget action camera worth your hard-earned dollars? Well, we're gonna get to the bottom of that because in this video, I'm checking out the x -Pro Trek 4K action camera, and I'm gonna show you some stuff that the other reviewers have missed. We're gonna test this thing not only in bright daylight, but also dark low light, also while riding a bike, and do some other cool stuff so you can get a good idea whether or not you would like to buy this camera. Big shout out to Expro Trek real quick for contacting me and sending me this camera to test it out. Now, Expro Trek really has a pretty interesting story, which I will tell you now in the next few seconds. According to their website, a guy named Bill started this company because when he was growing up, Bill could not afford to buy really good sports equipment and all the cheaper products were all poor quality and they would all break easily. Major bummer for Bill. Fast forward to adult Bill. Bill started Expro Trek in 2018 with the goal of making good quality sports equipment that was also affordable. Not only that, but according to their website, every purchase that you make from Expro Trek, they donate a portion back of your purchase to a group called the Youth Sports Charity. Very cool. Today, Expro Trek makes stand up paddle boards and they also make this 4K action camera. So let's talk about the camera. Now, the camera design is quite similar to something like the Akazo Brave 4 Pro or the SJ Cam SJ4000, but the Expro Trek has them both beat because the Expro Trek can shoot in 4K 60 FPS, which is something neither of the other cameras can do. But is the quality any good? Well, we are going to find out in this video. Now, the Expro Trek action camera costs $109, which it's pretty awesome to find a native 4K camera for just over a hundred bucks. Let's take a look at everything that comes in the box real quick. Now it comes already mounted inside of its waterproof case. Now while this camera is inside this case, it is waterproof up to 40 meters or 131 feet underwater, making it a great choice for scuba divers. This thing comes with a ton of extra accessories. You get everything that you need to mount the camera to a bike, to a helmet, to a skateboard, your car dashboard, a tripod, and more. The camera itself even has a quarter inch thread on the bottom so you can mount the camera directly on a tripod by itself with no additional accessories which is really cool and something that a lot of other action cameras don't have. You get two flat bottom mounts with double sided sticky tape and they even give you two extra sticky tapes which is nice. You can use this sticky tape to mount the camera to pretty much anything that you want so you can get shots like this. You even get four different bandages that you can use to wrap the camera around things, and they also give you this extra back for the waterproof case. Now, I saw a lot of other reviewers that didn't understand what this was. Here's what it is. You can put one of the straps through this extra back to mount the camera to something. So the camera will still be protected inside of this waterproof case. Now, of course, it won't be waterproof anymore because the thing has holes in the back of it, but this case will still protect the lens and the camera, which is cool. Now, this allows you to get shots like this, and this without using up one of your sticky tapes, which is nice. What's really cool is the camera comes with not one, but two 1350 milliampere hour batteries, which each give you over an hour's worth of recording on a full charge. And you also get this really cool remote control that you can wear on your wrist that lets you take photos and video with the touch of a button, which is really, really useful and awesome. I use this remote almost every time I've recorded with this camera and it works great. Now, the only time I did have a problem with it is when I stuck the camera underwater and I stayed outside of the water. When I did that, the remote did not usually reach through the water to the camera. But other than that, it worked perfectly every time on land. Now, it comes with a micro USB cord that you use to charge the battery and also copy footage from the camera to your computer. And you can also get a free gift if you post a review on Amazon. Just make sure you do that within 14 days of buying your camera. Hey, thanks a lot, x -Pro Trek. You also get a lens cloth, a clip that you can use to clip the camera to your hat, jacket, etc. And an insurance strap that you use to attach to the camera and the camera mount so you don't drop your camera and lose it forever in the bottom of the ocean, which happens more than you might think. The camera has dual screens, one on the front, one on the back, which is really useful because if you're filming yourself, you can frame the shot nicely by looking at the front screen. 
That way you don't think you filmed something really awesome and get back home to watch the footage, only to find out that you framed yourself outside of the shot and you only filmed a brick wall or something. Again, this happens more than you might think if you don't have the dual screens. Now this camera is super lightweight and it actually feels like you might break it really easily, but I can say that I accidentally dropped this thing straight on the hardwood floor without the waterproof case from about four or five feet and the battery door opened and the battery fell out, but after putting the battery back in, the camera still worked worked fine, but still, I definitely recommend keeping it inside the waterproof case as much as you can just to be safe. So how safe is it in the waterproof case? Well, let's take a look. Here the camera falls off of the backboard 7 feet onto the concrete while inside the waterproof case. The waterproof case was scuffed a bit, but the camera still works just fine. Then I used the J hook and the adhesive mount to put the camera on an RC car and I found out that the J hook is not the best thing to use if you're doing something rough because the J hook came apart every time I jumped the curb. But to be honest I think the footage of the camera falling looks really awesome and I got the chance to film this super cool caterpillar so I have no regrets. And even after all of these tumbles the camera works just fine. Now, if you want to get some really, really smooth shots, you can use a gimbal. You can see how much smoother the footage is here when I'm using this Hoham iSteady V2 gimbal, which I highly recommend. Let's look at some of the specs on this camera. It's got an all winner V316 chipset. It's got a Sony IMX386 sensor, 170 degree ultra wide angle lens. It will take 20 megapixel photos. Video format is MP4 and image format is JPEG. It will do 720p up to 240 FPS and it will do 1080p up to 120 FPS. It does 4K up to 60 FPS. It does have electronic image stabilization, but not at higher frame rates. And the 4K with EIS is only at 30 FPS. Yes. Here's a test of the electronic image stabilization while riding a bike on pavement in the park using the bike mount that comes with the camera. On the left is 4K 60fps with no EIS, and on the right is 4K 30fps with EIS. It seems like the EIS does a decent job, but as you can see, there is still a decent amount of shaking going on there on the right. What about distortion correction? This camera does have distortion correction to get rid of the wide angle lens distortion. So here's what it looks like with distortion correction turned off versus distortion correction turned on. But you cannot use distortion correction on 4K 60. And when you turn on distortion correction, it looks like it also turns on EIS and vice versa. So you get two for one. You either get EIS and distortion correction or neither EIS or distortion correction. Now that's not a huge deal, but it is worth noting. The slow motion works really well. The time lapse works really well too. Now one battery will only last you for about 90 minutes, but you can do what I did and use a rugged battery like the Anchor PowerCore 10,000 and pretty much film all day and night however long you need to. Now let's see how it does in low light. Honestly, for a $100 camera, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not gonna work in pitch blackness, but if you're shooting something at night that is lit up decently, it comes across well enough. Just make sure you put some light on it. But it definitely works best outside in bright daylight, no question.
The 20 megapixel photos look pretty good if you don't mind the wide angle lens. I mean, they aren't going to be confused for a professional photography camera anytime soon, but again, for $100, the photos work pretty well. Now we have come to a very important part of the review where we do some audio tests. This is great conditions for an audio test. There's no wind. So yeah, you should be able to get a pretty good idea of what the sound sounds like. This uh, is a couple feet away from me on a selfie stick. And yeah, hey, you let me know in the comments, what does this sound like? What do you think of the audio? Let's talk about the phone app. Now you can connect this to your phone. The camera emits its own Wi-Fi signal, so you just need to download the DV King 4K app and connect to the camera's Wi-Fi. Now you can see what the camera sees on your phone. You can control the camera, change menu options, record, and even play back your recordings and watch them on your phone, which is a really awesome feature. Pros and cons. Pros. It does include in-body tripod mount. You can set the ISO manually. It does come with everything that you need to mount it to almost anything. The remote control that it comes with is super useful. It costs way less than a GoPro. It is waterproof with the cage. It does have a dual screen. It is touch screen. And the quality, I think, is good considering the price. What about the cons? Now, the footage obviously is not as high quality as something like a GoPro Hero Black, but that is to be expected since the GoPro costs four or five times more than this. The image stabilization is not as good as the more expensive cameras. It is not waterproof outside of the waterproof cage. And the sound quality isn't really that great. It tends to clip if you talk really loudly like I do. If you want to use this for something like YouTube videos, you will probably need to record a voiceover later with a different mic or record audio on the spot with a mic plugged into an external recording device device like the Zoom H4n. So what's the bottom line here? I think this is a great budget action camera. It's obviously not as good quality as the more expensive cameras, but like I said, that's to be expected. Like the old adage goes, you get what you pay for. You can't spend $100 and expect to get $700 worth of hardware. So for 100 bucks, I think this camera gives you a great bang for your buck. So who is this camera for? It's really good if you need to get some kind of dangerous shots, but you don't want to risk your super expensive action camera getting broken. It's good for your first action camera so you can get used to what you can do with an action camera. Uh, it's great if you need a camera to film a vacation or travel video to show your friends and family. It's really good camera to give to older children because you aren't out a lot of money if they break it. It's great for someone who's just starting vlogging or a YouTube channel. You can get into it without spending a whole bunch of money and see if you like it. Just don't rely on this camera for your audio. You're either going to do a voiceover later or use a separate recording device and a mic while you're filming okay so who is this not for this is not for you if you are looking for top of the line pristine video quality if you are looking for that you will probably want to fork out the extra money for one of the more expensive cameras like a gopro or insta 360 so what do you think let me know in the comments below then check out this playlist for more action camera reviews and i will see you in the next video